there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I wanted to show you four different ways you might try to decorate the edge of your Bible. This is certainly not required for Bible journaling, but sometimes it's fun to make something pretty. And over the years, I have seen people decorate the sides of their Bible, and I've seen pictures on Pinterest with Tombow markers or Marvy markers or some kind of water-based markers sitting beside it. And I didn't look at any tutorials, so there could be tips on this out there if you really want to try this. Um, I didn't find it worked all that well for me. It could be that my book wasn't closed tight enough, but this is also a really old Bible. It's a used Bible that I purchased way back when I first started Bible journaling so I could have something to practice on that was Bible paper. And I found that what happened is all the pen marks wanted to try to go vertically along with the lines of the, the paper and stuff. So it didn't work out all that well. I tried outlining things to clean stuff up and I just wasn't really pleased with it. If you want to try something out like this on something before trying it on your Bible, you might find an old book, maybe a book you didn't like or something, and try it on that. See if you can come up with a design and a technique that will work with those kinds of markers. But what I did try was a thicker nibbed metallic pen. I have these permapake pens and they're they're metallics, but the nibs are wider than they are on those other markers. And these I found a little bit easier to work with, although it was harder to get a tiny line. And I decided to just go for making vines all over the edge of it. I still had some of that sort of thing where it wanted to go vertically and I was arguing with the marker a little bit that way. And again, it probably would help if you could put the book into an actual vise or something to really hold it. Right now, this Bible is being held together by the band that comes with it. So it's holding it somewhat, but it's not super squeezing it. But every Bible also is going to have a different amount of perfection around the edges. You know, whether the pages are all stitched together exactly perfect. And this one came out okay. It was not great, but you know, I was just trying to do some loose sketching in there and see if that would work. I might go back in with the pen again and do a little bit of cleanup work on it, but that worked nicely. And there was no bleed on the inside from these markers. It's possible that some of that will pull in if I try doing watercolor on a page that has a little bit of that on there. So I'm going to probably use lighter colors when I do this on my my final Bible and my good one that I, I like to use a lot. So this is one that I really wanted to try. I saw somebody with a pin again. It was years ago that I saw it and I haven't been able to get it out of my head and I couldn't figure out how to get watercolor to be dark enough. So I used acrylic and I wrapped the edges of the book, the cover front and back all the way around with blue tape so that I could just kind of paint away and not have to worry about getting blue paint on everything. And I just used an acrylic paint for this. And I thought I was being really smart because look how nice and dark it is going to be. I wanted to do galaxy around it because just that's one of the things that I think of when I think of God is just his majesty displayed across the entire galaxy. So once it was dry, I put on some other colors. I got some pink and the pink is not metallic but this gold is actually a metallic paint. And I'll try to find links to all these paints down in the doobly-doo down below in the supply list. I always have supplies down there for all my videos. And then there's this kind of turquoise color and both of those are by Pebio. And I, it's shiny gold and shiny blue and I thought that'd be really cool. And wouldn't this be great? Afterward, I got some white gesso that I used for making little stars and I got out the tiniest, tiniest brush. I never use a double aught anything, but here it seemed appropriate. You could spatter some dots on there, but I wanted it to be a little more under control on the sides of this. And so I just used a little bitty tiny brush to do that. When I pulled the tape off, I found that it actually ripped when it pulled on the cover because it's a paper cover on the inside of this Bible. So be a little careful with that, but one solution, and I am all about having solutions that just tackle problems that come up. I don't get upset if I quote unquote ruin something because you can always find a way to fix things. So I decided to just paint the inside front cover and back cover with the same galaxy design. So I'm using on this, I'm using a really cheapo brush. On the outside, I used a cheapo foam brush. And on this one, I used just a, 
a cheapo brush I got at the hardware store. And in order to get rid of all those lines and make them not so linear because it was a cheapo yucky brush, I just used a cotton ball to mush it around a little bit and then added the galaxies back in again with a cotton ball the same way as I did on the outside edge of the Bible and splooged color around. And I was thinking about where I'm going to put a Bible verse across this and kind of just planning it out in my head a little bit so I could leave room for what I wanted to do with enough color underneath of it that a white pen would show up because I wanted to have some white pen lettering and just kind of splooging the color around. And I know this has gotten further away from the whole idea of just doing the edge, but when the paint you use on the outside kind of causes that to happen because you've t used tape that didn't pull off. And that was even delicate tape. So yeah, be, w be aware that that could be a problem. Once I got all that done, I decided to spatter on the inside. So this is what you could do on the outside, but you might want to be careful and cover the, the outside cover so you don't get spatter everywhere. But here I was able to mix the white paint to a consistency that would fling off the brush. So sometimes it takes a little thinner paint but if it's too thin, then it'll look like gray dots. But here is the page with the verse in it. Isn't that beautiful? With all the shimmery paint and I lift up my eyes, the whole Psalm 121. And here's the edge of the Bible and how beautiful that looks. And I did the inside of the back. I would probably be putting another verse in there. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the description. But what I found this acrylic paint did was caused me to have to pull apart every page. Well, not every page, but most pages. And it didn't tear anything, so that's not a concern. But I did have to go through the entire Bible and pull them all apart. But once I did, it flips through just fine. There were a few places where the acrylic did splooge down a little bit. So when I do something on that page art-wise, I'll have to take that into consideration. But that led me to thinking, okay, I want to do some watercolor on the outside edge. And I have this journaling Bible. It's an interleaved one that has the blank pages in between. And the cover of it has been getting a little bit dirty over time. And I decided to paint the cover too. So while I was doing this one, I'll just go ahead and show you how I painted the cover. And I used the Pebeo paint again. That's the same gold paint I used before. And then this other Pebeo paint, this is a, a yellow color. And I love yellow. That's my favorite color. If you want to do something like this, just get your favorite acrylic colors and make them all colors similar to each other. So I'm using a little bit of white and it's just a white gesso and a yellow yellow paint. These are just acrylics. They're not fancy things. The Pebeo are the ones that you might be interested in, the, the gold and the turquoise shimmery ones. The rest of them are just regular old acrylics. But I pulled in some yellow colors, a little bit of white, and then I threw some purple on here. Why purple? Because purple is the complement to yellow. And I wanted to have a bunch of different yellows on here, but I wanted to have a little richness, a little depth in here somehow in order to create something that would just look a little more interesting on the cover. You can do it in all just one color, absolutely. And I'm using, again, that really cheap brush from the hardware store, like didn't get fancy with it. Some of the paints, I'm going to just play around with how wet do they have to be in order to move on this surface, because this cover is canvas. If you're using a different kind of cover and it's got something, you know, maybe it's a slick cover, you're going to have to put gesso on that first as a first coat and then go from there. But I wanted this to feel not like it's all painted on top, but that the color is sinking into the canvas. So I'm just using little tiny bits of the, the white gesso just to add some brightness of color to a few spots as opposed to trying to cover the whole thing because the gesso underneath would brighten all the colors on top of it. And I didn't want it to be like screaming crazy bright. I wanted it to feel kind of uh, orangey goldy with a little bit of shimmer in it. And I just kind of kept painting on it until I was satisfied with it. One of the really nice things about acrylic is that you can just keep painting over it. So if you paint over top of this with a whole different set of colors, then this can serve as the undercoat. I actually tried at one point with this one to paint a lion in here, kind of just into the, the yellow paint, and it came out really awful. So I just painted over it and made it just plain color again. And that's kind of the, the joy of doing something like this, 
you don't have to be perfect. You can always change it and do something else. So here is the gold watercolor. This is Daniel Smith's Iridescent Gold. And this Bible, again, doesn't have super even edges, but using that foam brush with watercolor worked really great. And I get just that shimmer of a little bit of edge of gold. If you've seen a gold edged Bible and wanted to know if you could do that with yours, this one is the simplest and cheapest way to go, I think, with doing this whole technique. Just grab one of your watercolors, whatever color you want on the outside of it, mix it so that it's thick enough that you can get some real color on it, but not so much as it starts dripping down into the Bible. And with this one, you, you can tell I'm just squeezing it by hand to get the, the paint on it and nothing dripped in there. So all the pages were just fine with that. But when it's all dry, I did do the inside cover and I thought I might do a verse or something in there. Maybe that's where I'll paint my lion. Or I may try painting the lion again on the outside. Who knows? But none of that gold dripped down in. I just have a beautiful gold edge now for this Bible. So there you go. A few ideas for decorating up your Bible if you're interested in doing such a thing. And I will see you again next week with another Bible journaling video. Have a blessed one. God is with you. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.